disperse them out, which means you have very little margin on the variables or the savings that you want to have. So, if we have to take all of them and we have to save, then you know how are we going to run a hospital? See, it is very easy to say that we will not add the cost of land, we will not add the building of the cost. So, in a corporate hospital, probably they calculate by the square feet of space that you have and the next speaker would be going around and telling you that, that that also has a cost. Every square feet of space has a cost because <coughs> now, how do we go to the final point which is efficiency? We go through clinical services, we go through the service processes and we also go through outsourced efficiencies as there. Again, he is going to talk and you know, all these three combined together to give you a better throughput and then you become more and more and more efficient and the best hospitals are very, very, very efficient. So, let me tell you about, I don't know how many of you know about the Indra IVF center. That has one of the highest profitability margins anybody has in the country. They are going up to as high as 40 to 42 percent because their processes are so good and none of us in this room, I mean at least the corporate sector are ready can compete with an Indra IVF center. So that is how they have uh, put these. <clears throat> now, we are talking of small little things. Needless spending. Does a surgeon or does somebody who is cleaning a wound actually count how many pieces of gauze he has used, how many he has thrown, how many has fallen onto the floor? That has a cost. And it is based on, you know, why are we doing a thing? Who is doing a thing? How, when, where, how, and these are simple questions that have to be asked when you are talking of productivity. It is also on benchmarking. You put a benchmark and you say that you raise it up to the level of the benchmark. Once you have reached the level, raise your benchmark again and go on to that. And this is a very dynamic process which happens in a hospital. So today if I am earning 1 crore, at the end of next year I should be at 1.5 crores. Because if I don't save that, I cannot invest into new technologies, new manpower, uh, new systems, new processes which are coming in the world. <coughs> and basically, this is how we make a flow analysis. So there is a standardization of the product that we are going to do, say a TKR. We are looking at what are the resources which have to be deployed, how many nurses, how many technicians, uh, how many machineries systems of navigation is there or not and all of them is again a cost. And how I process my sequence, basically and you know many people have talked about it that patient who comes to the OPD has to go through a registration, then it goes through a gentleman who is sitting in the OPD, then he orders a test and it is a very, very sequential. So by the time it is 6 or 7 hours, that is the time when the patient is out of the hospital. There are certain processes which have been developed which sequence you through the process. Now, basically also we are looking at outsourcing, return of investment and so on in a hospital. So if I have invested 1 rupee, I need to get at least that 1 rupee if not 1.05 rupee. And we are all looking at we are looking at everything from imaging, lab, supply chain systems, information technology, nutrition security, skill sets which are available and training also is a cost. Dr. Ganguly was talking yesterday about training and getting these nurses for four to six weeks training and so to send them into the ICU, that also has a cost. This is a Inamdar and Kaplan diagram long time back, about 18, 16, 18 years and they are calling this as a balance scorecard. And a balance scorecard is basically financial, <laughs> customer satisfaction, standardizing your internal processes, learning and growth and if you have to do a management of a hospital, this is the four things and this diagram has stayed there for the last 15, 16 years and is used by a whole lot of companies including Harvard and other things. And again, you know, this is how the diagram works basically on the four processes. So, uh, if you are looking at one of them, it would be financial and financial would be uh, revenues and managing costs. 
to these metrics which are there clinical operation and financial then customer you need to have lots of volume hospital is a volume dependent center and if you don't have volume you don't have anything else and then you know you get into the rest of it internal breeze turn around times efficiencies reusability of certain things and learning and growth <coughs> so basically we are looking at competing controlling collaborating and creating that is what a hospital is all about and there are certain indicators that we are looking at we are looking at length of stay we are looking at the revenue generated we are looking at the surgical procedures done we are looking at the operating margins we are looking at critical position which is vacant if there is a surgeon or who is doing a cabg he disappears we would have lost a whole lot of money the total margins at the end of the day that you have the pair source sorry the pair source so it could be a cdhs echs psu and cash patient most corporate would prefer to have cash in hand at the end of the day and how much is being pending from the different areas which are there this would be one certain template that you know a small little template which you would be looking at you're looking at the bed numbers the ip revenues the opd revenues the revenue re realization per patient in the op and the ip we are looking at the volumes of consult we are also looking at the occupancy percentages and finally we have a small little financial this thing which are how much is your gross revenue how much is your net revenue what are the discounts that you are giving so a discount could be free treatment for your employees that's a discount and uh, then the realization per occupied bed on a day so this is uh, uh, what we are looking at basically this is uh, have been given by the institute of management and they say that they call it steep safe timely efficient effective and patient centered care is what you would like to have in a hospital very easy to remember and that gives rise to different hospitals performing differently that strategy has to come from you what threatens what you want to do has to come from you and if, i don't know if uh, i would say it sir can say it. there was a gentleman called su 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 something like that pingfa and he has written a book and he says if you have if you know the terrain and the environment half the battle is won if you know your enemy is the full battle is won and that was given 2000 years bc so basically you need to understand the terrain the environment the clouds the thunderstorms at the end of the day you need to know your own strengths and deficiencies 2000 years ago this gentleman said it this was mao zedong's philosophy actually on which he worked out just a few words on uh, this would be last four or five slides that there are certain patient safety challenges uh, that we are looking at and you know the amount of hospital acquired infections and deaths that occur in the us is going up to 1 lakh and 50000 uh, per year which is equivalent to one jetliner crashing and killing 300 people every day so that's the amount of uh, uh, errors that we commit hospital infections that we reported and these are all preventable deaths the answer the thing is sorry that not who caused the accident but what caused the accident and that is very very important <clears throat> so patient safety is the one of the roadblocks that we have to come across it and this is the last slide that incompetent people are at most 1% of the problem in other 99% are good people trying to a good job who make very simple mistakes and it's the processes that set them up to do it so you know we have a tendency to blame individual i think the mindset has to change and say that we now we want to blame the processes for the simple reason that no one goes to work with the intention of making a mistake on the morning and thank you so much this is just a preamble that i have set the other two speakers uh, uh, dr gupta and uh, ravi would go ahead and tell you the rest of the and myself as well
उसके तरह किया था अरे नहीं आइए था अरे सर नहीं नहीं आपके तरह so the uh, healthcare as a whole is a industry which is regulated uh, actually for uh, it's too regulated for our comfort you end up taking not less than 100 different licenses act compliance while you are running the since project till operational you will be complying almost 100 acts licenses this that this is becomes uh, this is what your general life the second challenge which industry has got is high cost of establishment we in a service industry we are uh, per bed cost when we are establishing a corporate hospital we generally tend to take a cost of say 1 crore per bed in super specialty hospital when we are establishing uh, the next challenge which is coming is increasing cost versus quality and quality versus accreditation these are the issues which will be we are facing and this thing talked about availability of resources day to day our life doctors in certain areas always as the study doctor talat was saying that some huge amount of doctors and nurses are deficient which will never be able to fulfill as per the who standard for corporate hospital yield is important bottom lines are important and which is decreasing because of different schemes which government is forcing day by day newer schemes and this is going to be the life where from cash so we intend to get more cash patient and we would like to get more patient of cash paying but reality is that payer group is changing from cash to insurance and to uh, institutional payer this is what is life ayushman bharat if uh, in, the way it is perceived and implemented uh, in the same spirit our payer group will be 90 95% it will go to the credit bills medical legal scenario uh, every day we are uh, hearing cases against doctor huge awards by consumer forums and different you know even medical legal uh, criminal cases against doctors and directly patient ire against you ever changing technology and patient demand patient will demand you the best services he is not going to give you respite that okay so you are a, uh, you are not a corporate hospital hence you should be giving some kind of sub standard or perceived sub standard services he will compare you to the whatever group he has availed services from he is going to compare you from the best of the services if he is paying he is going to be more demand if he is not paying still he will demand from you uh i will talk about cost of project when uh, you plan a hospital only planning is the thing which will help you in decreasing your project cost if you plan your project completely and from land purchase what kind of services you are going to render what kind of building services and all those things has to be defined and put in place before you go in excavating start doing the project if you don't plan your cost is bound to increase day by day as your project will pro prospect all project has to be defined with time bank clear cut time banks what is the time bank for your structural how much time it will take your services and then that is the only way to contain the cost in of project part of vendor planning before as as you have got a calendar your services are supposed to be started you if you, you don't do the vendor selection earlier when the service 
has to be started and you go in vendor planning, you are going to lose money. If you plan and do not do more redos, some visit happens and then you start changing, no, no, here it is not good, it is that decision is going to cost. Because once you have planned a particular nursing station or something on one side and it is done and then you change, no, 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 it is not that is going to cost you. And that uh, when you do ask changes in project, you do not realize that that is also going to change your flow when you are going to uh, run the hospital. One time expenses best to incur at that point of time, uh, the te uh, tendency is to avoid the cost, project cost. Take the cost if it makes your life simple when you are operating the hospital. If you do not take the cost, your recurrent cost is going to become high. While you are executing the project, somebody is going to say from project, Sir, aap is, is mein kya aap ek doctor yahan rakh dena hai, wahan pe rakh dena. It's very easy said that you will not get that second doctor. When you can, ma if you've got a big uh, hall or ICU, you can manage there. But if you've got two ICU, nahi sir, do le lo sir, aap ko ek thodi do de rahe hain. Dus bed yahan, dus bed wahan. Dus bed mein mera ek doctor yahan lagya, ek doctor wahan lagya. So and nurses, you will not be able to optimize. So, for optimization, you have to have a certain number of beds at one place of time. Which generally, because of different structural reasons, somebody is going to suggest you on the walk, sir, aap ek ICU yahan le lo, ek wahan le lo. Don't you all this discussion has to happen on the paper, not on the real side. As and when you go and do start accepting those changes, the cost is going to rise for project and for your execution when you are day to day. You are going to okay. primarily uh, high running cost. How to avoid? There are certain things. One of the things which we talk about is outsourcing, which minimize uh, or Contain your cost. Which area to look into? Non key area, which is the things which is not your core, which is not your core competency. As a hospital, your core competency is to deliver clinical services. Focus on those clinical services. And then clinical services are also there are certain hospitals which will be known for their, say, critical care or their radiology is best or neurosurgery is best. So focus there and all those things which you perceive or you believe that it's not core can be out. Commonly, we do uh, different hospital has got different strengths, and according to their strengths and weaknesses, they will be outsourcing housekeeping, security, FNB, engineering, maintenance, laundry, and linen. To most of the corporate hospital have got their IT services, which are very important to them. No corporate hospital runs without IT service, but the maintenance of IT services is outsourced. Biomedical services, to certain extent, they are also outsourced. Transport and ambulances. Very few hospital actually owns corporate hospitals. I'm talking about own their ambulance, <laughs> parking management, back office and accounting services, salary uh, preparation. They involve a lot of technical input, which we are not best person to handle those things. We outsource to a competent company who will be specializing into payroll management, uh, salary management, all those compliances which comes, EF and etc. Et all those things can be. Compliances. Uh, we have got huge number of compliances which you are supposed to do daily, weekly, there is that. So there are special people. If you want, you can outsource it. It will reduce your burden. Call center and front desk, call center all across services, call center are outsourced. If you outsource, you can draw better efficiency. While outsourcing, uh, uh, there are certain questions. The outsourcing se acha kaise ho jayega? How the quality will improve? When you are outsourcing, you have to be very clear about the SOPs. Your SLA has to be defined. What you want from the uh, vendor? What kind of services? So your services has to be explicitly enumerated, and their that turnaround time has to be defined. What you are expecting from them? Are you Outsourcing whole thing or your part um, equipment hum laenge, manpower sub sundar dena. Ya equipment manpower sab aap kar rahe Equipment manpower or material tino aap outsource karna. That all you have to define. What kind of material? What kind of equipment he will be rendering if you are actually outsourcing? Manpower of what quality you are going to get? All those things if you don't define in contract, then your services will not be at par or you will not get the desired result. But when while you are defining, you are uh, planning to outsource certain things, you have to do the homework. Define it as detailed as possible and discuss. Get the punitive and uh, reward measures. Rewards are important. Uh, we generally tend to put in contracts, we generally tend to put 
एस एल को इतना दिन में नहीं किया ये तो इतना हम काट देंगे ये नहीं किया तो इतना काट देंगे बट इफ यू पुट रिवॉर्ड यू विल सी द रिजल्ट सर्विस लेवल एग्रीमेंट होते हैं आप उसने डिफाइन किया इतने टाइम में आपको एक वो करना आई टी में बहुत कॉमन है जहाँ पे <coughs> कोई भी कंप्लेन उसको पंद्रह मिनट में हैंडल करनी है अगर प्रिंटर आपका काम नहीं कर रहा तो समबडी कॉल्स फिफ्टीन मिनट में उसको कॉल अटेंड करना है वो नहीं होता तो अगले हाफ एन आवर में उसको नेक्स्ट लेवल पे स्केलेट हो जाएगा तो इफ यू ब्रीचेज ऑल दो थ्री देन विल बी देर विल प्यूनिटी मेज बट इफ यू हंड्रेड परसेंट टाइम्स और नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट नाइन्टी एट परसेंट टाइम इट वेल दर्व यू वेल टू गिव रिवॉर्ड इफ यू हैव प्लान दैट and that works actually if you give very minuscule reward works wonders when you are outsourcing uh outsourcing as a solution for medical areas again everybody has got different take everybody will be but these are the things which are available already happening nothing is written here which is not happening in our country in our states uh, radiology services lab services pharmacy physiotherapy oncology specialist Radiation, especially radiation oncology, cardiology services, cath lab and uh, operations, ESSD, audiometry and related diagnostics, ophthalmology, medical transcriptions. All these things are happening in our country. You have to take which is your weak area, which where you want you don't want to invest, which is non-career. You have got a space left. You want to utilize its best services. In Ranchi only there is an example. One hospital is running for say 15-20 years. They had one floor vacant for quite some time. Recently, they have outsourced to a corporate hospital, which has established cath lab, everything else, and it's running. So this is happening all around. You just have to see and borrow whatever you can. Oncology, Dr. Talat would talk about his oncology. His oncology is outsourced. Uh, investment is in huge money. You have to invest instead of doing that. You go into agreement, give that area. So somebody comes with that money, puts that equipment, runs it for you. You earn profit, and you, obviously your patient is get comprehensive care in one building, one campus, which is you get in return. Uh, which kind of outsourcing models are available? So outsourcing models sometimes you can have uh, in security and housekeeping. Primarily, it's manpower or the number of uh, houseman or security number of supervisors you can outsource. outcome based or sla based it's again it doesn't matter how many people they are deploying you have to just look at the how many complaints at how many time what time they are attending if they are attending 100% time 90% 50% accordingly the payment will happen revenue share radiology lab pharmacy all these are revenue share model mostly it goes it can be is per unit cost per patient per unit cost it can be mostly outsourcing happens on again th there are different differentiators with equipment if he is going to install all kitchen equipments all service equipment the cost will be different if he were he is only going to operate then the cost will be different rental if you are uh, renting out certain areas for somebody you are not investing just renting out get the rental in lieu or various combination of all these these are the models which uh, we generally sharing of resources is another way how to minimize the cost if you in low uh, in generally in bigger hospital especially in psu and government hospitals there is a certain beds are dedicated to certain departments uh, in corporates we have got away from that tendency we have uh, given patient choice which kind of bed he is going to occupy and every doctor will attend according to whichever department he is from he will come and look at those beds that way you will bring out efficiency because agar aapka ek ek department mein 50 bed aapne de diye hain और वो यूटिलाइज दस बेड ही कर रहा है डेली आपके रिसोर्सेस तो वहाँ पड़े रहेंगे चालीस बेड तो खाली रहेगा दूसरे में आउटफ्लो हो रहा होगा वहाँ भरा रहेगा बट यू नो इट्स नॉट उसका पेशेंट वेटिंग लिस्ट में चल रहा होगा एक जगह चालीस बेड है बट अगेन यू आर नॉट एबल टू यूटिलाइज तो अंटिल गुड हाई वॉल्यूम सेंटर्स देर इज नो फन ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग योर रिसोर्स अकॉर्डिंग टू डिपार्टमेंट इट्स बेटर लेफ्ट टू द पेशेंट ही चूज अकॉर्डिंग टू बिजनेस रिसोर्स डिप्लॉयमेंट चल ओनली वी बाई ऑक्यूपेंसी तो विच फ्लोर और विच एरिया इज गोट विच काइंड ऑफ Occupancy again is that kind of resources. Nurses, how many do you need? If the floor is there, you have made a ratio. Four is to one, is to one, five is to one. You are going to allocate. There are ten beds. You have got a ten bed ward, and ten beds are occupied. Again, you will reduce the nurses, DDA, housekeeping area, other things. Pharmacy and other services. There are again in bigger hospitals, which are horizontal in nature, have will have. 
some different duplicacy of pharmacy outlets, different pharmacy outlets for the department, small lab units in the different departments. It is best if it is centralized, your cost will go down. If you have got uh, uh, instead of having different outlets, maybe a uh, uh, phlebotomy is installed, get the sample at centralized place, do it, process it, and send the reports online. Your efficiency will increase, cost will go down. Mechanization pneumatics uh, suits yesterday was being talked about. So, all pharmacy, lab, all those things, no manpower is required to take pharmacy items from one place and run to the ward or different area. You just enter the system, it will go to that desired place. It is very uh, uh, time to time you have to re engineer a process. The way you are, the way operation, hospital operation is happening in your hospital. After certain periods, they need some re engineering. It, it has to be overlooked. It have to over, you have to relook at the whole process. From outside perspective, when you will relook, definitely you will improve on certain things, on certain, you will uh, reduce your manpower if there is a possibility. But until now, so you look, overlook the whole thing, if you do not see through the whole process in a whole, you will not be able to minimize the cost or you will not be able to improve. High cost resources like radiology, again it was being talked about through technology, it can be definitely uh, the cost can be brought down. MRI, how many doctors will be reading, how, not all radiologists will be reporting MRI, but if you have got one resource who is reporting at some place, you have got equipments, images can be transferred. We do it uh, for Medanta, we are doing it in Darbhanga, we have got a medical college which has got CT MRI center. In Patna, NMCH, we have got CT MRI center. Darbhanga incidentally does a huge number of odd time CTs. M midnight they will do 20 CTs, 26 CTs and tomorrow morning you have to give the reports. Midnight we have got only one doctor there. We get it reported from everywhere. From Indore somebody is reporting, we get it from Gurgaon reported. So, that is the way you can, even you can do it. It is one pack system, one ILL between the units and it is happening all over. Quality pays. How many of uh, us think that delivering quality will pay or cut cost? Right? Wrong? Anything? Yes. The quality comes with us. Efficiency will bring better quality, sure. Efficiency is part of this thing. So, it will cut cost. Uh, uh, as doctor, uh, if you have heard Dr. Talat saying, you have to make process efficient. People are not that efficient. People will have their own, you know, this thing. You have, you have to make your process very efficient. Checks and balances. Uh, people individually, some individuals will be extraordinary. Not, not denying that. But if you do not have processes which are very strong, you will not get efficient. One smart doctor and rest very average or you know team members are not that good, then you will not get best result. Even a very smart or very big performer needs support. He needs a team. If his team is lacking in certain things, uska discharge banega nahi. Ek star doctor hai, uske bas jo team member uska discharge hi nahi banega. Uska patient six hours faltu mein pada hua. Uska discharge doctor ne subah hi bol diya, shaam ko discharge. So whatever good surgery has done, the poor guy will get a negative marks from the patient because he discharge six hours sitting there, he will get it at the time. So all good has happened. He has got his extraordinary medical services. He has recovered well. But if your team doesn't support him to go out, patient last time, he is harassed. Eight hours sitting there, he will get negative remarks, negative feedback. So you have to make a team which is efficient. Everybody buys on the same day. It's not that. There are also doctors. We, you, and us, who are working there, and we will join in the same group. And from here, we will go there. So, doctors are also the same. Cost will be the same. We think about the cost. So, the issue will become the issue. If you think about it, you can do it. It's not that you don't have a cost important. You can look at top management and see how important the cost is for them. So, focus. हाँ 
but they create also something called perception you know bilkul bilkul perception see that's what i am i am not using the actually word satisfaction perception exactly that's what i'm saying so uh, quality and this is also a part of perception when there is a perception usko lagta hai ki wahan pe bahut acha hoga not necessarily wahan bahut acha hai as a doctor you might be knowing ki wahan pe certain services are not that good but as a patient he has got perception ki wahan pe bahut acha hai somewhere you know uh, again you are right uh, i am not denying what you are saying my point is that you know when the perception which comes because you know in when you are catering super specialty care you are taking all kind of patients which is coming to your way gun shot bomb blast this that every uh, intubated 10 hours journey ke baad aa raha if you take all those things your mortality rate will be high and then some idiot will come and say ki bhai kya to jo jata mare jata hai cause your mortality is going to be high you can't compare so that's why it's very important to talk about your quality and your indicator what kind of indicators you are talking about Ma'am, we create perception. You can also do that. No, perception doesn't cost. Perception, you know, you should know what you are going to play. Your manpower strength is much more than the way we run our hospital. Sir, because somebody is very focused and pushing that. It's not about uh, earlier days. We also had our own employees who were doing. But later on, we over a period of time, we realized, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. Why to invest so much of management time and everybody's time to do this mopping business? Then it can be outsourced, and the same cost or similar cost. If the cost is the same, I can outsource that thing, and I will just get better service. And somebody is focused. In my team, there is a housekeeper who will whose job is to get certain things. He has got parameters defined. How much time is cleaning? How much time is cleaning? How much time on rounds? If I see something, he will be. I am not going to talk to the housekeeper. I will talk to the housekeeper who is on my role, and he in turn will talk to them, and my things will be so. so my focus if my focus is not there mai bhi accept kar leta hu wahan pe ganda gira hua uske baad wala bhi kar leta hu uske baad wala bhi kar leta hu yahan pe na mai karta hu na mere doctor karta hai na mere consultant karta hai uske niche bhi aata hu wo bhi to baat suna ke jata hai wo aur fir uske jab finance ke paas jata hai payment ke liye to wo to sab ka jod ke baitha hua hai ke acha okay fine sir i want query sir you told that you uh, you do not allow beds to particular department okay beds can be occupied by any department any sort of so what is the ratio of ccu icu beds as compared to general ward beds uh, again uh, where you are putting up that hospital so in uh, my previous organization uh, we had 79 beds out of 230 operational that yes, part of 42 rooms so it means that if beds are empty in the icu or ccu and patient no no no, no, no. you in area mein to we have to so okay sorry I, I take my word, but our, while what I was talking about is a general area. I was not talking about uh, critical care. Critical care or OT को बात नहीं करते। वो वो sacrosanct है। उधर उधर general patient को नहीं डाला। That is clear. No, no. I will talk about you know department wise. हमने bed ward beds दिया। Not allowed beds particular departments like yeah. gynecology because we want more bed occupancy. Yeah. If that it turn out is not much of case of gynec cases, orthopedic cases, <laughs> that in case that case the bed will be remain vacant. Yeah. So that is that so with the CCU, ICU bed? No, no CCU. So uh, we know our business, and we know what ca capacity I am utilizing, and the similar capacity is open for that department. We are measuring very uh, because it costs money. So we are measuring. Doctor Talat and his team will be measuring completely. क्या हो रहा है उनके ICU में? अगर वहाँ पे आपको बेंसी उनकी 50 percent पे आ गई, somebody is his hair, hair hairs are not gray, growing grey as well, you know, because he has to measure all those things. 80 critical care beds and occupancy falls. His revenue will be going to you know. completely south sir so, that, that is a pressure upon you people not to make 100% occupancy in ccu icu bed so that we are measuring and we are talking you know agar mere ko nurses wahan pe khali lage to main nurses kahin aur le jaunga i can do that 
मैं बेड तो नहीं उठा सकता लेकिन नर्सेस तो उठा ही सकता हूँ ना नर्सेस शिफ्ट कर देखिए पॉसिबिलिटी कुछ भी नहीं है एज ऑफ नाउ अगर मैं बात करूँ तो पॉसिबिलिटी ये भी नहीं है then there may be a tendency that we need to start treating patients in icc which are not required because you know no no why it's high uh, icu because slash ward ratio because of uh, availability of icu beds in bihar uh, that yeah. was very deliberately done very high in any year to hospital the ratio of icu to beds is getting less as compared to government yeah. hospital where it is almost 40 to 50 percent in government hospital doesn't have 42 to 50 percent then i we don't have yeah. what would yeah. have so, so because see our perception two things one uh, bihar like Either you are receiving more serious patients yeah. or you are, you are you all are kind of patients will take बिहार में अगर उनके डॉक्टर लत्ते हॉस्पिटल की मैं बात करूं क्योंकि वो शायद हम लोग ज्यादा रिलेट कर पाएंगे दिल्ली की बात करूंगा तो थोड़ा ऑड हो जाएगा वो उसको अलग रखते हैं वहां पे कोई भी गन शॉट कोई भी बम ब्लास्ट कोई भी बड़ा पॉलिटिशियन या कोई भी सो कॉल्ड वीवीआईपी कुछ भी होगा एनी थिंग मतलब बड़ा एन सेंगे लूज मोशन से लेके उसको थिकनेस किसी भी लेवल का हो दैट विल गो टू दैट प्लेस नो बडी गोज टू पीएमसी एट विद गन शॉट समबडी विल ब्रिंग एंड देन इट विल बी रेफर्ड हायर सेंटर लिख के वो चला जाएगा सो कैन आई जस्ट one minute sure. since they are talking about as to the icu bed uh, you know our icu beds have a full nearly full and uh, we say that you know 85% or more is technically taken as a very high occupancy of the icu but please understand with that when your beds are high and i'm answering your question ki aap zabardasti mareez ko wahan thelte hain if your icu beds are that there is definite definite and sir will tell you that there are definite indications for icu admission which comes out through a clinical audit and if you are not transparent on your clinical audits you can have a situation what you are saying ke zabardasti hum thel rahe hain hum ye kehte hain ki i am transparent i am putting out a clinical audit let somebody come and challenge me that this patient these are scientific parameters it's based on pulse blood pressure things like that and and your biochemical parameters सो so, आप कहेंगे सब पोटेशियम लो है तो आईसीयू में क्यों जाएगा आईसीयू में नहीं जाता वो वो एच में जाता है बट यू नो वाई यू गिव पोटेशियम यू हैव टू हैव अ मॉनिटर्ड बेड यू अंडरस्टैंड एग्जैक्टली सो दिस इज व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इट इट डजेंट नीड टू गो टू दैट यू पुट द पेशेंट इन दी यू बिकॉज दैट इज वॉट द इंडिकेशन इज अगर ये छह घंटा भी रहना है ही हैज टू स्टे ऑन दैट मॉनिटर्ड बेड Which which means the that there has to be a nurse which is every allotted hospital to monitors is there every length of stay and there is a huge pressure on management to decrease that. No top management who is actually finance guy or uh, of not a medical doctor he is not looking at this thing कि आप कितना total revenue दे रहे हैं वो per bed देखता है नहीं नहीं ज़्यादा दिन रहेगा तो नुकसान होगा so there are there are two Sleep types one audit is a departmental audit one is a hospital audit so that's why we will not keep it and therefore there is that harm yes that harm actually yes. there is a perception ki wo zyada rakhne se zyada fayda hota hai actually wo harm karna shuru karta hai profitability ko girna shuru hota hai isliye wo every length of stay both importantly aur day to day monitoring hoti hai har hospital mein hoti hai wo day to day hota hai doctor wise hota hai room wise area wise hota hai so you know okay I'll answer your question, sir. Wants okay. To uh, good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Shakti Gupta from AIMS, New Delhi. Uh, when we plan a hospital, basically, so for a general hospital, we keep a provision of what ten percent. That's for ICU beds, because there are not actually special devices. So as in today, for planning a super specialty hospital or a multi specialty hospital, we keep a provision of forty percent as ICU beds. no uh, what type of hospital it that also depends utilization of icu beds you know in a private hospital the main gen, uh, revenue generated is from the diagnostics operation theater and icu so once the patient is out of icu so there is no fun in keeping the patient in the hospital like in aims actually for a cardiac bypass surgery so once the patient is out of icu maybe after 24 hour 48 hours so we don't keep patient in the ward for more days at least some people uh, want to keep the cardiac bypass surgery for about 14 days but uh, uh, on fifth day we usually discharge the patient and ask the patient to come back for removal stitches what we believe when the patient is out of the icu and it is observed for a day or so in the ward so why unnecessarily we keep the patient in the hospital and it is occupying unnecessarily bed but in a private setup 
what they do is the so because they, it is a revenue generation actually so they keep the patient in a private uh, setup like in icu the charges may be about 1 lakh rupees per day it varies from 50000 to 1 lakh rupees but in uh, in our hospital we don't charge for the icu we don't charge for the doctor fees we don't charge for the nurses actually so that same cost comes to about say 60000 rupees for cardiac bypass surgery so it depends upon the policy also no as regards the admission of the patient in the icu so there is a set protocol that this is the this is the patient who fit into this criteria they will be taken into into icu it is not that a patient vip who comes will keep in the icu you will be surprised that in icu itself the infection rate is about 25 to 40% so why unnecessarily keep you and expose the patient in the icu actually so uh, so so the decision is taken by the team who manages the ICU. Like in uh, uh, suppose there is a patient of medical in AIMS, right? They decide that occupation needs a, they will consult with a concerned team from the ICU, mostly the anesthetist, and then they discuss whether it needs admission or not. Once a patient is shifted to the ICU, then it is a total management by the, the internist or the anesthetist or whatever team which is managing that. But of course, this decision has to be taken by both the clinician and the anesthetist because it is the anesthetist or the internist who is managing the ICU. They have to implement that actually. So this is a policy we follow. And the same way. In that situation, even if you are taking hypo or hypercalemia or even hypo, then you have to keep the patient get okay. The second situation of this uh, behavioral, one by one. behavioral and lifestyle choice, what you say, someone of the, uh, this uh, acute gastroenteritis and some talk, they have to be changed in the eye as you like this. So this behavioral and lifestyle choice could be another challenge to the patient. What from this? But I think multiple See, we, we move That's faster. We also declare some rise in the ratio like 20%. As when, when we, uh, we are dynamic, we are more dynamic, you know, say when we are, I, I, when I'm saying we, uh, what I mean that corporate hospitals are more dynamic in a sense taking decisions. If I start feeling that uh, certain area of beds is overutilized or there are, you know, typical stress, I would be kind of forced or I will take decision, I will quantify that. Is there a possibility of creating certain other areas, converting it into ICU? There is a need. And if there is a need, we will do it. We will implement it. In fact, uh, you can talk about the changes which you have done. So certain areas we had when I was running the hospital, the same hospital he is running. So he changed certain area because there was a focus and pressure of beds. He created certain other things out of that. So my, you know, uh, certain area is lying vacant. Not I will at the cost that. of patients. We are more agile. We are more as we are watching. We are very uh, uh, not at the cost, not at the cost of patients, patient. at the cost of getting more patients in from the same because facility. My occupancy is 89 percent, 90 percent in critical care. So I am, you know, starving. I have no bed. I have to refuse patient refuse to And if it will sustained period, mein hoga, then it creates a bad name. And Patna and Bihar is a very small place, and bad name runs very fast. So you have to be very uh, fast. How to do certain things? To minimize, you have a patient refusal. Nahi ho. Sick patient to refuse karna is again so what kind of hospital you are if you are so, uh, I'll just uh, add to that that in the last two years that I've been there, our cabbages go out on the sixth day, CABGs, and our knees go out on the sixth day itself. Jabke Hamare Ayushman ka jo standards hai, wo hai das din or art din. So, you know, now I'm freeing my bed for more cabbages and for, for more this knees. Is what is the package? What Dr. Talal also, is saying that we what keep we have, writing package absolutely. that okay, three-day ICU, four days outside. What this we have what also done is four days ICU, three days that outside. a whole lot of these VIPs, VIPs to aajkal sirf dohi tarah ke hote hai, ya to journalist hote hai, ya politician hota hai, aur koi nahi hota VIP. So, lot of comfort care patients come in, terminal malignancies. Patients who have severe stroke and there's and they would come here ke, sir, ab, mere father hai, hamare paas paisa isliye ICU mein rakh We have actually weaned it off and there are times that we had to fight with them ke, sir, this gentleman would benefit if you people are around as a comfort care rather than
putting him in one corner of the ICU where you will not be able to visit. So these are the little things which have to change over a period of time, sir. Sir, one question. One question to Talat, sir, and second is to sir, you, sir. First question, sir. <laughs> you spoke first. You didn't take question. Ha, sir. Because now you're in picture talking on other points. Therefore, I just take a chance to talk to you. Uh, sir, Shakti, sir, also. Let me first explain a situation, what is normal thinking, because at the end of the day, today and tomorrow, we are going to lay down something for as a suggestion. That is the reason of asking this question. class fourth, fifth, we have to say exam, not it true? Is it true? It is happening, yes. It is happening. Second, Bitya Badi Huye class 12 tak pohaj gaye, jisko ghar ka kamam bhi aata hai. Jab uska class 11, 12 aata hai, hum log bolte nahi. Ab chhod do, ghar dekhne ki zarurat nahi hai padho. It's true. Because usko ghar ke kam mein bhi sharing aa jata as Bitya Badi Not always true, actually. It depends upon the family background. Family background, exactly. Fine, accepted. Reason of asking this question is, sir, how much skilled doctors you push for administrative job, looking at this outsourcing and everything, rather than having a panel of people who are looking after this section of work. There are doctors who are interested in IS, one out of thousand, four out of thousand maybe, they go for that job. Few people who are interested, maybe not in clinical, but in this, fine for them. But should there be not a category of people in the hospital who should be designated to do this work so that at the end of the day, if we filter this health system through a funnel, at the end of the day, what comes out should be good is the good patient cure of his morbidity or whatever it is to reduce the mortality. So us medical aid to get that good result, should these doctors should not be focused towards the medical treatment and care to excel in that field rather than giving them the job forcefully, situationally creating them in our setup to do this administrative, contractual, uh, contractory, all this job. And for example, the Bombay Actric, Texas, if you abroad or here, Bombay Actric, the persons who are sent for the trial and all that, they are curtailed even from their family to do that, that particular work day and night. Then only good things come out from them. Then only the services, the real onboard services like the any treatment protocol can enhance and we can get good result. My I, suggestion I, is I right or wrong? Actually, you'll get the answer when I take up this session. Actually. Fine, thank you. <laughs> focus is important. Okay. Focus second, is important. I'll just try to, what Sarva was saying, Sarva will definitely elaborate. But see, focus is important. If you are forced to do something, there is a tendency of human tendency where you will refute. You so to like train it. to train in three workshop, a, a so-called like ENT surgeon for the cancer surgery, it's very easy to put him in a workshop. But he cannot perform that good who is doing onco surgery from 10 years, last 10 good. years. Done. So doing four workshop, making a doctor administrative personnel is probably you people will be doing far lag, lag time better than us. So I am what I am saying to dedicated personnel for the particular job will be better yes, than rather. First, my question was that. Second question to you, sir. Sir, a scooter mechanic, aaj training leta hai, fir dhire se bagal mein apna naya dukan khol leta hai, usko seekhe. It is an usual phenomena. Sir, you people in uh, private. You people are also outsourcing the things. So what are the reasons of that outsourcing and what are those points which you had failed to uh, so-called inculcate or incorporate within yourself for which you are going to ask uh, which outsourcing you are talking about. Uh, there must be something in your mind. You are Ravi, very, uh, there uh, is let a, me let me answer him. Just one minute. There's a constraint of time. Okay. Uh, after the speakers finish, can we have the discussion because you know there is another okay. session. I will answer your question we if uh, time doesn't answer. Answer. Actually, actually, I will also request all the participants that uh, put your point forth, but uh, don't insist on your point. And uh, once the point is parked, at appropriate moment, we'll try to address it. Because the faculty who has come, they have come with the constraint of time, they have to catch their flights. So I will not say that you don't put up your point, but uh, make your point and that allow the session to pass on. Thank you. I, I will answer your question if time doesn't permit on the I'll answer. Okay. So, uh, difference between organizations, quality is the only differentiator which we see. Uh, there are a lot of things which ma'am says that cleanliness is part of quality. Infrastructure, again, part of quality. So quality, you have to uh, breathe as an organization and which will differentiate your organization one from other. Uh, no two organizations are same. So, one hospital in of cell only, say in Durgapur, 
and another in uh, Bokaro, they are not same, they will never be same. Similarly, in corporate again, my corporate and your Talat corporate or somebody else corporate, they are not same. You will feel the difference when you go there because they have defined their parameters and their focus on certain areas and that is why they look different to you. Clinical care remains same or better, how will you judge? अगर आपका टीके और वो छह दिन में करते हैं मैं भी छह दिन में डिस्चार्ज कर रहा हूँ दो दिन आईसी में वो रखते हैं मैं भी दो दिन में रखता हूँ चार दिन मैं बाहर करता हूँ वो भी चार दिन बाहर करते हैं हाउ डू फ्रेंड बट अदर थिंग्स व्हिच इज हैपनिंग द वे केयर इज डिलीवर्ड इज डिफरेंट एंड दैट्स व्हाई पेशेंट परसीव इट डिफरेंटली एंड देयर इज अ फोकस देयर इज अ डेलिबरेट फोकस ऑफ मैनेजमेंट ऑन सर्टेन थिंग्स दैट्स व्हाई यू फील दैट डिफरेंस एंड क्वालिटी इज नॉट एनएबीएच और क्यूसीआई और जेसीआई और सो in your mind quality is you are delivering one day you know what is your quality but you have to add that it should be measured until unless you measure quality ka koi matlab nahi aapko acha lag raha hai ki humne acha quality kiya jab tak aap measure karenge aur kisi ke sath mein benchmark karenge tab pata chalega kitna acha kiya log kehte hain mehanga hai ya sasta hai mehanga kisse hai mercedes mehangi hai aur maruti sasta hai i don't think that's the way to look at it maruti apne segment mein dekhte hain mercedes dusre segment mein dekhte hain tab pata chalega mehanga hai sasta hai quality is unique to your organization to achieve quality standardization is a good start so nabh gives you that standardization certain things you have to do in certain way benchmarking against other hospital so bgh can be put against raur kela or that kind of benchmarking internal benchmarking can be created isme koi cheez achhi ho rahi hai usko aap process banaye measure kare wahan pe aur process banaye measure kare yahan pe similar things ko then you can internally benchmark your things so first step on quality journey first step to define your current standards measure and then try to improve infrastructure is not important most important is people and processes in any healthcare organization people are most important thing and the process are the bigger change changer of quality quality is a long journey which has to be walked every day quality aisa nahi hota ki aaj accreditation kiya audit kiya nabh mil gaya ya certain things mil gaya kal se khatam fir kal se chalte hain let's do start doing it the way we were doing it no quality has to be walked every day every moment the way you enter hospital the way you your uh, front office meets the way your parking attendant meets that's where your uh, quality is found measure 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 why i am i am saying measurement that every process has to be measured if you don't measure you are not going to improve 100% uh, surgical safety checklist how many surgeons are using i don't know but nothing matlab aapko kisi ko institution ko bolne ki zarurat nahi hai but who ka recommendation hai surgical safety checklist aap apne aap एज ए इंडिविजुअल आप कर सकते हो उसमें किसी को सेल में या यहाँ हो वहाँ हो कुछ भी जरूरत नहीं है आप खुद कर सकते हो अपनी ओटी दैट इज पार्ट ऑफ रॉन्ग साइड सर्जरी यू नो ये वी ऑल नो होता है गॉज छूट गया ये छूट गया ये भी सर्जिकल रियलिटी है बट अगर आप वो सेफ्टी चेकलिस्ट करते हैं तो देर इज ए प्रूव एन थिंग दैट इट डिक्रीजेज और यू देर इज चांस टू एलिमिनेट ऑल दोज एर क्वालिटी के लिए रिसोर्सेज की जरूरत पड़ेगी इंप्लीमेंट करने के लिए फ्रिक्वेंट मीटिंग ट्रेनिंग ऑल दो थिंग्स communication is another most important thing while while you are on quality journey you have to communicate the top management has to communicate with every stakeholder of their area take their buy in or bring them on board on your what you are planning what you are doing frequent communication is will actually decrease resistance discussion i think on the go ho gaya if anything is there i think Uh, am I audible? Okay, thank you so much, and uh, I'm really uh, thankful to organizer who has organized this workshop to give me a platform where I could share some of the newer technologies. As I told yesterday, it's a it's a sea world for newer technologies as also. So I will be just talking. Uh, I will be talking about three technologies which are actually saving the time of uh, the patient. that the stay is uh, limited in the hospital 
and also uh, it will save the hospital administration also from a lot of effort because as Dr. Talat Alim and they said that uh, you know for cardiac surgery the patients are kept into the hospital for 10 days at least. So there is a new technology which has come for valve replacement and this technology is actually percutaneous. It is same like uh, you know angioplasty. Similarly, there is a technology uh, which is for micra. Uh, you must have known about, you must have gone through the pacemaker, it's a bulky device, but here it's a capsule device which is being uh, deployed into the left ventricle. And the third thing which is important to talk about the hypertension, there are a couple of resistance hypertension with, with, with even five to six medicines, they are not being controlled. So there is a new technology which, is, which has come which is called RDN, so I am going to talk about that also. What the one I will uh, explain this, this is tower, this is trans aortic valve replacement, uh, which I told about the uh, valve replacement percutaneously. And um, this is micra, uh, which is a leadless pacemaker, and RD and the renal denervation, which is there to control the hypertension. Actually, it's uh, there to control resistant hypertension. So, I would like you to just go through this video. Yusuf, I would like to uh, have some uh, sound. Hard work harder to pump a normal day. own individual risks. So speak with your doctor about what route is best for you. These routes include an artery in your leg, an artery in your neck, a space between your ribs. In a typical Evolute procedure, the doctor makes a small cut at one of these access points and guides a thin flexible tube with the heart valve into your artery and up to your diseased valve. When the heart valve reaches the diseased valve, the features of the Medtronic Evolute heart valve allow your doctor to reposition the heart valve to assist in accurate placement. Once in place, the self-expanding frame of the Medtronic heart valve enables your doctor to deploy it in a controlled and accurate manner. After expanding, the new heart valve takes over the old valve's function to help blood flow efficiently out of the heart. Once the valve is accurately placed, the thin flexible tube will be removed, the cut will be closed, and the procedure will be complete. So how this works, so if you see uh, the difference between the, uh, you know, surgery and this uh, valve replacement, uh, aortic valve replacement through the groin, uh, you can see open heart surgery, it always uh, takes a toll on the patient by just knowing that it's an open heart surgery. Hospital stay is for 15 days, long period of recovery. 33% of the patients are of the age of uh, more than an equivalent to 75 years. And uh, most of the time they are being declined for surgery because of the comorbidities. Then uh, <coughs> primary reason for not undergoing surgery are, as I said, age and uh, comorbidities. <clears throat> the patient are uh, treated surgically, many are at high risk and uh, the proce uh, procedure then they are inoperable, they are high risk or even the patients are difficult to treat uh, and had no other option except going through this percutaneous uh, non-invasive uh, treatment. Here as from administration point of view, there is only 2-3 days hospital stay. And uh, this is the recovery is faster in uh, comparison to cardiac surgery. Also, the patients who are at uh, extreme high risk, they are also being treated by this, whereas in cardiac surgery, it's, it's difficult for their treatment. So, this is one thing. Uh, second, this is micra, which is called as the leadless pacemaker. If you see, there had been an evaluation, evolution of pacemaker. I would take you to this. 1958, 
this was the external pacemaker which was being first <coughs> deployed and uh, it was like always facing the patient from outside of the body. Then in 1960, we had this implantable pacemaker, 1986 <coughs> responsive pacemaker, 2011 it was MRI conditional pacemaker and see the drastic uh, revolution in 2016, it is intracardiac pacemaker. It's, it's a very small pacemaker which is like a capsule and it's been deployed into the left uh, ventricle. So this is micro pacing capsule, it comprises of three systems, micro pacing capsule, micro delivery catheter and micro introducer. You see how easily it's being deployed. There is no cut. There if is your no... heart beats too slowly, this is called bradycardia. Your doctor may implant a pacemaker to restore the heart's natural rhythm. Pacemakers are traditionally implanted in the upper chest, under the skin, just below the collarbone. The battery-powered pacemaker device is traditionally connected to the heart by wires called leads. A pacemaker can send electrical impulses to help stimulate the heart. There is now a new pacemaker option, Micra, that is the world's smallest pacemaker, about the size of a vitamin capsule. Yes, Micra is small, but it senses and paces just like a traditional pacemaker. Micra is implanted directly into the right ventricle of the heart so that it is invisible from the outside. This eliminates any leads, chest scar, or pacemaker bump under the skin. The micro device is implanted by a minimally invasive procedure. A straw-like catheter is inserted into a vein, typically near the upper thigh area of the leg, and moved up to the right ventricle of the heart. The micro is placed against the heart wall and secured with flexible tines. An external programmer is used to test and program the micra. The delivery system is then removed and the incision is closed. So this is also something which saves the patient stay in the hospital. They, it, for patient stay? Uh, it's the same uh, battery life like any other pacemaker. And uh, it's uh, it's the uh, uh, lifetime warranty which has been given. Uh, so cost is approximately five lakhs. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is a US FDA approved. Uh, the thing is that it. So this is actually single chamber. We are also coming up with dual chamber. Very shortly, we are coming in a couple of months. That, then again you uh, no, there is no replacement actually. It is a, it's a very small capsule though it remains there. But uh, still, I mean, we have not been able to, uh, you know, come across where the replacement has been required. As you said, programming has been done from uh, outside, external. Uh, so about the clinical follow-up and data, we can come back to you because at the moment I am not. But it is really working very well with most of the patients. Uh, so far, uh, we we did not have any uh, eventualities or events, and that's how the second uh, uh, newer generation with dual chamber pacemaker micro is coming up. Uh, but yes, if you want to know more about this details, I would certainly like my clinical specialist to reach out to your places and give you more details. Yes. I I must say that there is a, uh, there is a life of this uh, uh, micra, and uh, since there is no replacement, so obviously the uh, the capsule has to be again. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. This for life. Now uh, moving to the second, uh, the third. This is RDN. This is renal denervation. And uh, as we all know that kidney is a part of uh, uh, body's blood pressure control mechanism. The 
because the sympathetic nerve system that actually uh, regulates and modulates the uh, blood pressure. So, if you see the nerves leading to an outside and inside of the kidney uh, renal system, they actually play a very important role in hypertension. And uh, RDN is a minimal invasive procedure that modulates the output of the sympathetic nerves which is located into the uh, renal artery. Here RDN uh, consists of uh, two uh, uh, things, one is the motor which is uh, RF generator and the second is the catheter, there are only two things. Catheter itself is like uh, the procedure is same like uh, 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 angioplasty, uh, catheter of 6 French is deployed from uh, uh, the groin and then on the renal uh, artery inside the uh, radio frequency is being given to ablate the nerves and that is how the there has been drastic uh, uh, drop into the systolic and diastolic pressures which has been uh, seen through clinical trials and it is being established by hypertension uh, HT3 clinical studies and it is really proving uh, that there is a drastic drop in systolic and diastolic pressures. Just the like link between this. hypertension and hyperactivation of the sympathetic nervous system is well established. Renal sympathetic nerve signals, both those going into the kidney and those originating from the kidney, play a key role in driving this hyperactivation. Ardian's Simplicity Catheter System offers physicians a way to precisely target and deactivate renal nerves with controlled low power RF energy delivery from the tip of the catheter through the artery walls to the surrounding renal nerves. This novel intervention is intended to reduce the level of sympathetic nervous system hyperactivity and lower blood pressure. Although this new procedure, termed renal denervation or RDN, has its roots in surgical sympathectomy, modern technology has transformed the approach into a less invasive, more straightforward cath lab-based procedure. The Simplicity catheter system features two main components designed to work in concert to deliver safe, individually tailored treatments with maximum ease of use, the low-profile treatment catheter, and the automated portable RF generator. The steerable Simplicity catheter is specifically designed for safe renal artery intervention. Six French compatible, it has ergonomic controls for rotation and flexing, along with a self-orienting tip for stable atraumatic vessel wall contact. The Simplicity generator automatically controls each energy delivery, adjusting to the individual patient during the treatment via a proprietary algorithm. Hands-free pedal activation and built-in control mechanisms maximize safety and allow the physician to focus on the procedure rather than the equipment. The endovascular procedure is performed with no permanent implant. The catheter is simply advanced into the renal artery using standard interventional technique with rotation and flexing controls used to achieve optimal positioning. Following an initial two-minute ablation, the catheter is rotated and the treatment is repeated in a helical pattern at three to five additional locations along the artery. After both renal arteries are treated, the catheter is straightened and removed from the body. Patients recover quickly and can soon return to their daily living. The RDN procedure is designed with the goal of quieting the renal nerves, counteracting chronic activation of the sympathetic nervous system, and providing. So, uh, I just wanted to show you one thing. Now, uh, initially, the catheter we were ablating from the tip of the catheter, just going uh, blindly to different uh, nerves and but now this is a spiral, uh, you see this is the latest generation RDN uh, uh, Simplicity Catheter 3 which has got a node, if you see this is the nodes which are spirally uh, designed to kind of you know uh, give the uh, ablation RF onto the, so once it is deployed it is being taken care of. In one shot earlier we were just giving different different dots you know on to the from the tip of the catheter. But now we just deploy and take it out 
and the entire ablation is done. So this is how I just thought that I should say, uh, share some of these newer technologies. He, so, so uh, the the uh, gradient. Firstly, it is actually being uh, uh, being evaluated on the basis of the systolic and diastolic. Uh, yes, uh, it it just shows the uh, result post and pre uh, blood pressure monitoring. Recurrence rate is not higher because the newer uh, uh, trial, the latest trial which has uh, been shown in uh, TCT 2018 and uh, during PCR also 2019 has shown significant uh, 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 significant uh, increase into the, uh, the efficiency of this device and uh, significant redu reduction into the uh, blood pressure of the patient. Sir, it is not available in India right now. I'm sorry. It is still uh, in, uh, into the uh, and finally, I think by 2020, I'm more into cardiac, sir. I keep it cardiac, so I don't have any idea. I'm sure I will ask one of my students to meet through and how to explain. Thank you so much. Thank you for your